Hey guys, this is Tim from DimDrive.com showing you the new DimDrive 2.0. Now we're gonna run the DimDrive 2.0 and you'll notice right away that it shows a lot of different games in the game section. Now DimDrive will integrate with Steam and it'll pull the different games that you have on Steam and automatically integrate them within DimDrive. For example, let's take a look at my Steam here. These are all the games that I have installed and let's pick on Skyrim, for example. So here's Skyrim, Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Let's actually take a look at Betrayer as well. We move this back over here. You can see I have Betrayer right here. We scroll down in alphabetical order. We'll be able to see the Elder Scrolls Skyrim, or just Skyrim, it looks like. And you can see all the different games that we have in Steam. Now, uh, when you launch this, if you have a huge Steam library, you can actually favorite a game. Here we have Bioshock Infinite favorited. Let's actually favorite uh, Castle Story, which I think is a really fun game that's being developed. Um, we can take a look here and we can sort the different favorite games. So if you have games in Steam that you play more often than not, you can kind of flag them and bring them to the top. You can sort by the different size, you can sort by when you've last used them in Dim Drive, as well as click the wrench option and you can choose, let's actually let's go down to Skyrim, that seems to be a really popular game. Let's uh, highlight Skyrim here and let's sort that, bring it to the top and let's click on the wrench. Skyrim has a lot of different mods, and let's say you are a heavy Skyrim player and your Skyrim directory is 30 gigs in size. Let's pretend you have 30 gigs of Skyrim data, but let's also say that you only have a 12, gig, 12 uh, gigabyte of your RAM drive size. What you can do is you can go into Skyrim, you can click the little wrench option, you can click less RAM, and you can specify which files you want to make go super fast. So for example, if you're doing a lot of Dragonborn expansion packs, you might pick Dragonborn, you might pick the Skyrim meshes, you might pick the high res texture packs, and so on and so forth. So we're gonna just set this to more, we're gonna hit close, and we've put a lot of effort into streamlining, streamlining this to support people who have hundreds, if not thousands of Steam games. One other thing that's nice with Dim Drive is it will work with any game in any program, regardless if it's Steam or not. And we have this app section. You simply take a program that you want to use with Dim Drive, and we're just going to use uh, Crystal Dismark, for example, and you just drag it into Dim Drive. Dim Drive will automatically look at how that game is structured on your computer. It'll look at how large it is, where it's installed, the shortcut icons, and it'll configure Dim Drive automatically for that. And you can click on Wrench, and you can actually see a little bit of information about where this game is installed, um, the size of it. Um, you have the same options if it's a very large game or program, you can select what files you want to go fast, and so on and so forth. So we'll hit close. Um, Dim Drive also has a setting area where you set how large your RAM disk, uh, how large you want it to be. We have 12 gigs here. Let's just set for a test here, we're going to set 8. You can pick which drive letter you want it to be. And there's USB 3 turbo mode. We have a built-in benchmarking software here. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and close that. A uh, little about menu, and then there's a little theme selection to go between multiple themes. Right now we just have a light and a dark version, but we hope to expand on this in the future. And so let's go back to apps. Let's uh, enable both of these programs. Let's enable Crystal Dismark and CPU-Z. And uh, yeah, let's just do those two. We're gonna click on. What's gonna happen now is Dim Drive is going to go into those program directories. It's going to configure that data and it's going to create a virtual RAM disk or a virtual hard drive and it's going to move all those files over and then it's going to create what we call symbolic links. And what a symbolic link will do is notice that we have CPU, Z and Crystal Disk Mark right on our desktops. Now because these are set up in Dim Drive now and because Dim Drive sets up symbolic links you do not need to change your shortcuts on your desktop. You do not need to change any um, shortcuts within Steam. If you're running Origin, you don't have to change any shortcuts within Origin. Dim Drive sets all that up automatically. And we can kind of validate that by going to, let's, for example, CPU-Z, going to Properties here, and we're going to open up the file location that CPU-Z is installed. It's installed on my F drive, which is a platter-based mechanical drive. Here's CPU-Z. If we go back one directory, we're going to notice that CPU-Z instead of being a normal directory, it has a little shortcut link. And if we click on that shortcut link, we're gonna notice that it we're gonna notice that it looks like it has all the normal files, but the shortcut is actually going to be a symbolic link. You're gonna see it's a symbolic link back to the R directory or the R drive. And if we look at what the R drive is, go back to Dim Drive, go to the settings, R drive, sure sure enough is Dim Drive. And if we click on open drive, Dim Drive will open up, 
and it will show dim drive R right there. It's going to show two directories, one CPU-Z and one for crystal disk mark. And what's nice is any time, let's say you go into your crystal disk mark, or let's do CPU-Z. Let's say, let's pretend this is a game and you have a new game save file. We're going to call this uh, game save file 01. Okay. You created, uh, you saved your game on your RAM drive and all of a sudden your computer crashes. And you, you think to yourself, oh my God, I, I've lost my data. What am I going to do? Um, because the RAM drive exists in RAM. Well, uh, when you power off your computer, the RAM loses power and then the RAM gets wiped. Now, the good thing about DIM drive is DIM drive automatically synchronizes files between your RAM drive and your actual mechanical hard drive or your solid state drive or whatever it may be. If you go look at the bottom of DIM drive here, you'll see synced. It synced up the initial new text document. Um, but the one that we care about is uh, the game save file 01. So let's say if you saved your game on your RAM disk here and then your computer turned off, well, DIM drive says it synced it back to your normal hard drive. But let's actually test that. Let's turn DIM drive off. So let me make sure that we don't have CPU-Z running, which we don't. So let's go back here and we're going to click off. Let's close these extra directories so we can show it all from scratch. So we've clicked off here. Now we're gonna go back to CPU-Z. We're gonna to go to Properties. We're gonna click Open File Location and take a look here. Sure enough, we have the empty directory or document that we first created. We don't need that anymore, so we're gonna hit Delete. But look at this, we have our game save file text. Now remember, this was saved on our RAM disk. So let's actually just open this up. Let's put, um, let's put early save in this document. We're gonna save it right now. So we're gonna hit Yes and Save. Let's just go ahead and close this. We're going to turn dim drive back on. And now we're going to open up the location of this particular program. We're going to edit the game save file. We're going to call it, we're going to rename it, call it late, late game save. So uh, as if you're saving your game a second time, we're hitting yes to save, closing this, closing this. Now we just edited we just edited the save file. If we go back, back the directory up a little bit, we notice that we edited it on the symbolic link of CPU Z. Again, if we go to the properties, it'll tell us that this is actually pointing to the R drive. And again, when we look at the R drive, that is dim drive and it's the CPU Z folder here. So let's uh, click off here. And so off would simulate you're turning dim drive off or maybe you're powering your computer down, you're rebooting, your computer crashed, whatever it is and we're gonna see if that file actually saved. So we're gonna go back to the shortcut. We're gonna open the file location and the file location, if we back it up one directory, we notice it's no longer on the symbolic link to the virtual disk that dim drive creates. We can click CPU-Z, we're gonna click the game save file text and sure enough, it says late game save, which shows you that dim drive synchronizes files in real time. So maybe you're playing a video game and you're saving your game, or maybe the game is doing an update and it's patching files. Dim Drive will be able to synchronize all those updates with your computer in real time. Now, Dim Drive also is exceedingly fast. And let's give this, uh, uh, let's do a little example here. We're gonna remove these two things from Dim Drive. And we're gonna start Dim Drive just as a blank drive that has no data on it. Before we do that, let's start a benchmark on our normal mechanical platter drive. Let's do a really quick benchmark. Let's just say um, 50 megs, we're gonna hit all. And we're gonna put a little sticky note here. We're gonna say this is a normal um, four terabyte hard, drive, hard disk drive. And we're gonna say mechanical Seagate. Okay, and this actually has, I believe 128 megabytes of cache. So it's a, it's a nice typical hard drive. It's, it really is a nice typical hard drive. We can see we're getting between 100, uh, peaking at, uh, if we take the two numbers, peaking at 130 megabytes a second. That's, that's a really good speed for a hard drive. However, imagine you're playing a game. Imagine your game is, let's say Bioshock, for example. You're playing Bioshock. Bioshock is almost 18 gigs in size. Now imagine if your computer has to pull off, it has to suck in, let's say three gigs of graphic files and it's sucking in three gigs of graphic files at 100 megabytes a second. 3,000 3, megs at 100 megabytes a second is gonna take 30 seconds. That means you're gonna have load times and nobody wants load times. 
Um, so that's where dim drive comes in. Now we're gonna turn dim drive, we have an eight gig drive, we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna see how fast dim drive gets. Now with all benchmarks, you're gonna have to keep in mind that we are recording a very high bitrate video on a different drive. And so whatever you see for benchmarks is probably gonna be, I would say 25% slower than if we weren't recording a video. We can kind of confirm this by looking at our task manager here. We're using roughly a third of our processing power just to make this video for you guys to see on YouTube. So we have dim drive loaded up. We're gonna run crystal disk mark again. We're gonna put this over here and let's actually create a new little note. And we're gonna call this a dim drive uh, RAM disk. Now we are running, uh, I believe 1866 megahertz RAM and it's CAS 9. So pretty decent memory, uh, definitely not the fastest memory it could be. And actually I take this back, we are doing CAS 11. Um, so it's pretty decent memory, not the, not the very high end, not the very low end. So we're gonna put this right here and let's run crystal, we already have it running here. Let's do the R drive because R is our dim drive right here. And we wanna do the same. So let's just do a 50 meg and R. It says eight gigs, which is what we have it configured as. And let's just let it run. Now, imagine now that same game, you're loading in 3,000 megabytes of data. This drive over here would take roughly 30 seconds. Um, so let's actually put this here. It would take roughly 30 seconds for three gig of data. Okay. Now let's take a look at dim drive here. And we're doing for this particular one here, about 4,200 megabytes a second, up to 6,300. So we're gonna say it would take for um, less, well, let's do less than, less than one second for three gig of data to load. So imagine you're playing that same game and you're loading the game initially, or maybe you're entering a new dungeon within the game, or you're doing something within the game. Imagine, imagine the difference of waiting 30 seconds to one second, how much of a difference that would make. It's a pretty large difference. And if we look at the other things, um, multiple accesses to a drive will crush a standard hard drive. Here we have our 4Ks um, are basically half a megasecond up to 1.1 megasecond. So whereas dim drive is maybe 40 to 60 times faster in the sequential uh, reads and writes, dim drive is, it looks like up to 1200 times faster, um, over a thousand times faster in your 4Ks, uh, which is uh, a substantial thing. If, you, if you're doing a lot of video editing or if you're doing playing games that have tons of files that are accessed simultaneously, your 4Ks or things approaching 4Ks, um, little tiny, more of the smaller uh, hits um, make a pretty big difference on the speed performance of a drive. So there we go, we have a quick little benchmark between a normal hard drive and dim drive over here. We have a listing of how Steam integrates within dim drive. We have a little demo of how any sort of program will work within dim drive. Uh, let me give you one more little demonstration here. We're gonna use World of Warcraft, for example. Here's World of Warcraft. I'm an avid World of Warcraft player. Um, if you want World of Warcraft to run in Dim Drive, you can actually just drag the file over here. Oh, it looks like Dim Drive is running right now. Let's, uh, let's not, let's actually just close Dim Drive here. Uh, yep. Now let's add World of Warcraft. And see so we have a shortcut called wow.exe. My World of Warcraft installation is almost 30 gigs in size. Now World of Warcraft has all sorts of files. And let's say my dim drive, let's say I have, um, let's say I have 32 gigs of RAM, or let's say I have 16 gigs of RAM. Let's say if I have 16 gigs of RAM, if I have 16 gigs, let's say I minus three, let's say I minus two gigs for OS, minus uh, two gigs for wow equals 11 gigs dim drive, okay? Let's say for wow.exe. So let's set our dim drive to be 11 gigs. Go into apps here, click the little wrench. Uh, we wanna do the less RAM option. 
We're going to click configure. And what's going to happen now is dim drive in the background is going to go through your World of Warcraft directory and it's going to figure out all the different things that make up World of Warcraft as a game. You can see here I used to multi-box 10 druids at once. I have backups of my interface folders and so on and so forth. The largest directory size is the data directory size. And here you can kind of see even more of the structure of how World of Warcraft is done. And now you can see tons of small little data files. So depending on what game you want to play, you can actually figure out, and if you check the dim drive forums, you can see we have people who actually have figured out which World of Warcraft games you want to, uh, or which World of Warcraft files you want to select to have kind of the best performance that you could have. Um, and all that stuff is listed on our forums here. And let me see if I can uh, bring that up for you guys. Uh, here we go. So if you go to the dim drive forums, you can go under the discussions and you can kind of uh, view different techniques that people are using for different type of games. But let's, let's pretend that you've figured out that these are the particular files that you want to have go really fast. You pick those files, hit submit selection. It says six gigs total, five gigs remaining. You can go back in here and select more files, unselect files, kind of do whatever you want, whatever would be appropriate to that particular game that you're playing. Um, so we're gonna hit close. Uh, let's say you're not playing World of Warcraft. Let's say you're playing a Steam game. Let's go back to Skyrim again. Uh, click the little wrench. Let's say you only have 11 gigs of your dim drive size. Skyrim is 14 gigs. You need to somehow trim out three gigs of data. Just click configure, select all the files if you want to, and then unselect some files that don't really matter. The exe for games don't really matter. Um, you don't really care about any .NET stuff. You don't care about the visual uh, C++ redistributable. You don't care about the DirectX. Go into the data directory, and let's say you know you're not going to be playing in the um, Don Guard or Dragonborn area. So you could unselect this file. Um, you could unselect this Dragonborn file. You could unselect the videos. Um, and you can hit submit. And you can see that we're really close. We're at 11 gigs. So we just have to click the configure button and kind of remove a couple, a couple more things here. So let's go back into the data directory. Let's remove a file that we think is not gonna be very important. And that's the voice files. Uh, let's, what else do we think is not very important? Let's do the Skyrim sound files. Um, see where that brings us. 10.2, so there we go. So we remove some sound files, we remove some areas within the game that we're now, we know we're not gonna be playing and we've got it configured and that's that. Now, if you enable Skyrim and then start up Dim Drive, Dim Drive is going to do the exact same thing it did for, for example, CPU, Z, and Crystal Disk Mark. It's going to copy the files over, it's gonna synchronize everything and it's gonna set symbolic links um, for the games. Now, we see here that uh, Dim Drive gave us an error saying that symbolic links aren't able to be set. And what that means is we have the program running existingly and Dim Drive sets up in an automated way. It modifies or it, it creates symbolic links for the existing program structure that you have for that game, which includes shortcuts and, and the like. So if we close the game here or close uh, Crystal Disk Mark, for example, we're gonna turn Dim Drive off and then we're gonna turn it back on and we're gonna remember we don't have the program running right now. Uh, we have Crystal Disk Mark set up in Dim Drive and we are going to enable Dim Drive and then run the program. We'll notice that there's no pop-up about symbolic links unable to be set, which means now when we run Crystal Disk Mark, it's going to run, it's, ac it's actually gonna run off a of Dim Drive. Um, and there we go. Hopefully this uh, gives you a quick little video of how Dim Drive works. And if you have any questions, please check out dimdrive.com or go to forums.dimdrive.com and either myself or one of the members of the community will be sure to uh, assist you in whatever questions you have. Thank you for watching the video and I will be posting more later.